violate eternity. Now, before we get into that and, and unpack it, because I know you're thinking, what in the world violates eternity? That's, that's kind of weird. But God's investment violates eternity. I'm not sure if I have it on the screen or not, back there, Joshua, or not, but John 3.16 is where we're at this morning. And that scripture says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son, that whosoever believes in Him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not His Son into the world to condemn the world, but that through Him the world might be saved. He who believes in Him is not condemned, but he who does not believe is condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of the only begotten Son, of God. Let's pray today. Father, we need You desperately. And I pray today, help me, Lord, to convey this Word. Lord, right now, even now, Lord, bring back the, the thoughts that You've placed so deep in my heart. Even now, Lord, put the words that You want to speak today in my mouth. And help me, Lord, to convey Your hope. Help me, Lord, to convey truth today. We love You. We praise you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You know, one of our greatest examples of giving is God Himself. Did you read that? For God so loved the world that what did He do? He gave. You know, we don't have to go very far in the New Testament to find that. John 3, 16. For God gave. We can follow God's example. God gave and what did He give? He gave a great investment. And today I want to tell you that God's investment has violated my eternal path. Can I just say it that way? We'll get to it in a little bit, but if I'm honest with you, I was headed down a deep, dark road. There was a day in my life where I was running from God. And I probably should have been running to Him, but I thought I was 10 feet tall and bulletproof and I thought I had all the answers and I was running from God. But I'm so thankful for His mercy. I'm so thankful for His grace. One of my favorite passages is found in, in the Old Testament and, and it tells us there in Lamentations chapter 3 that He meets us with new mercy. New mercy every day. I'm thankful for new mercy that He meets me with the Scripture says that the stead, that same passage, the steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. It never stops. Can you imagine that? Can you fathom that with me for a moment? The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. Hear my heart today. I'm... I'm not advocating for a moment that, that we can even begin to trample over God's grace and His mercy and the blood of Jesus. Yes, I am striving daily to live a, a, a life that is pleasing unto God. But I am so thankful today when I slip up, when I mess up, when I miss the mark, when I make a mistake. Can I just call it what it is? When I, when I sin... Because we have all sinned. The Scripture says we've all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. But can I tell you when I've done that, that even the next morning, He meets me with new mercy. With new grace. New mercy. New grace. I, I, I don't have this in the notes, so I don't have a picture of my dog this morning. But I, I have a dog. His name is Cyrus. It's actually Sailor's dog. But uh, he's kind of become my dog. I don't know how that happens. I know. I guess if, if you know, Sayla forgets to feed him a time or two, and then I step in and I substitute, and I feed him and I water him, all of a sudden he's, he kind of starts warming up to me. But this dog is so loving. He's full of grace. And I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. There are sometimes um, I'll let him come in the house. He's a pretty big dog. And, and I'll be uh, reclining and I'm laying back. And he'll come up and he'll get right, I mean right in my face. I mean almost breathing on me. You know, I, and, and he's just like right there and he's so big. And I'm like, Cyrus, 
and I'm, and I'm pushing him, you know, and I'm pushing him back, and he's just right there. And please hear my heart. That that's the way God is. God, he just keeps getting in our face. He just he just keeps getting in our business. Can I get a witness this morning? And, and it's not a it's not a bad thing or an ugly thing. It's it's out of love. It's out of compassion. And he just comes and he just gets in your face and he just like my dog. He's just like he's like right there. He's just breathing on me. We sang about his love this morning. It's your breath in our lungs. So I pour out my praise. Amen. He put that breath within you. Just like my dog is right there in my face and he's breathing on me. And, he, and he's there with love and mercy. God is that for us each and every day. God's investment violates eternity. What was his investment? His, his investment was Jesus. His one and only son. Three months, uh, three months ago, three weeks ago, was my son's 26th birthday. I think we may have a picture. Um, if we can bring that up. Uh, gentleman on the uh, on the tractor. Yeah. That is my dad, James Howard, holding his grandson. And that is Caleb when he's probably like three or four years old. Caleb is now 26 years old, but I was wanting to find... Uh, and he's, man, he's strong. I mean, he is just so strong. I wish I was as strong as Caleb was. He sent me a video the other day of himself working out, and he is just, man, he's getting after it. And, uh, but this is him when he's young, and he's precious, and he's riding in, in Grandpa's lap. And it got me thinking about Caleb and on his birthday. And, and I remember when he was born on August 27th, 1996, that was such a special day. It was awesome. I can remember just being filled with great elation. I mean, just getting to be in there in that moment and, and to see my son come into the world and and to experience that and, and to know, wow, I had a part in this. I got to bring this life into this world. And in that moment, I, I knew that I had great responsibility. I knew that I had a great obligation. And this sense of, of fatherhood rose up within me. And, and it was a sense that I had to provide for my son. I had to protect my son. And it was a great responsibility that was placed on me. As a matter of fact, never in my wildest mind or my wildest dream would I ever consider giving my son for your sins for my sins and I know you probably feel the same way right but God who loves us so much for God so loved the world he gave his one and only son he gave the treasure of heaven can I say that this say it that way this morning he gave his one and only son for you and for me I'm thankful today that God gives us an example. An example, a great example that this investment violates our eternity. What do you mean by that, Pastor? I mean that I was headed down the wrong road. I was headed to a dark hell. I deserved it because I committed sin. I had sinned against God. But God got in the way. I'm thankful today that He gets in the way. He gets in the way. And He does it for our good. I think we have a couple of scriptures that I wanted to bring up if we could share those today. But God, amen, if you could help me with that. Joshua, do you have that? But God, it's probably... Well, let's read that one. We'll start there. That's a good one. Romans 8.32 he who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? God gave up his own son. He, gave, he did not spare his own son, but he gave him up for all of us. How will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? And then I think we have some other verses that, but God verses, yes. That would be point number two. Point number one was God invests 
God's investment violates eternity. Point number two is but God. Hey Amen. I was I, I told you I was headed down the wrong path. I was headed in the wrong direction. But Ephesians 2 and 4, I love this verse. But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love for us. Isn't that an awesome verse? That's an awesome verse. God who is rich in mercy. You know, I was thinking about this one day. Rich people don't live like poor people. And I get a witness in my eyes. Rich people don't live like poor people. Us poor people, we are like 98% of Americans, we are living from check to check and we're counting, you know, every bean, every rice, every, you know, everything and we're just making sure that we can get to next month and sometimes I know we're, we're scratching our head and I think we're, I think we're going to be able to make it next month. I, I think we can, right? That's, that's how we are as, as poor folk. But rich people, not that way. They, they, they lavish, they lavish uh, in their money. They just do. And they're always looking for another way to invest their money and this and that, and they'll take a trip or whatever. What I'm, the point I'm trying to make to you today is God is so rich in mercy. He's not sitting around wondering, am I going to have enough mercy today to cover all these sins? No. God who is rich in mercy, but God who is rich in mercy because of His great love for us. Let that sink in today. God got in the way. And He got in the way with great love and great mercy. But God demonstrates, Romans 5 and 8, but God demonstrates His love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. I, I, I know you've probably heard this message before, but it's still powerful. It's still true. And sometimes we need to be reminded, amen, that we were, we were in the midst of our sin, but Christ loved us so much that what? He died for us. He demonstrated His love for us and He died for us. But God, Acts 2.24, but God raised Him from the dead, freeing Him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on Him. I love that verse. I love that verse. Jesus who was, uh, who was in agony. Agony of death. But God raised Him up from the dead. Freeing Him from the agony of death. Because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on Him. I want to encourage you today. That sometimes death can try to wrap itself around you. Yes, both physical and spiritual. But God has the final say in it all. God has the final say. He has the last word. And He frees us from the agony of death. Yes, I know this verse is speaking of Christ. But I believe it can be applied to our, our lives. Because Romans 8 and 11 tells us, If the same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you... It will quicken your mortal body. Amen. But God raised him from the dead, freeing him from the agony of death because it was impossible for death to keep its hold on him. I don't know if you've ever had a situation in your life where you were facing death. I don't know. I remember one time I was 10 years old and uh, we lived in Eustace, Texas. Eustace, Texas, I think even, even today, there's probably about 900 people in that town. Back then, in 1985, 84, when, when we were, it was, well, it was 85, it was after 85, because I was 10 years old. And uh, back then, it was 524 people, and we had one flashing light. Your pastor, Keith, who is in Botswana today, by the way, we need to pray for him before we, we leave. I remember one time, Keith was coming home from college. He drove right through Eustace. Didn't even know he drove right through Eustace. That's how small Eustace was. But uh, So I had it in my mind uh, when I was 10 years old that I was going to go down to the baseball field and check it out because we had had a, there was a great storm that had come. And it had rained all night. But I just knew somehow in my mind we were still going to have our baseball game. I, I don't know. I just I didn't, And my mom was like, honey, 
that baseball game has done been canceled. And I know it's been canceled. She's like, you don't need to go down there and check the field because it's been canceled. Well, also, you had to cross a main highway, Highway 175, to go down to the baseball field. And my mom had told me, don't you do it. And I, I was like, okay, mama. And then when she wasn't looking, I jumped on my 10 speed. And I went down and I checked out the baseball field. And sure enough, I get down there and it looked like an ocean was covering that baseball field. There was no hope of a baseball game that night. I was like, oh man, mom was right. I came back and uh, I get back to the highway, Highway 175. I look to my right, I look to my left, it looked clear and I started out to cross the highway. As soon as I got out in the middle of the highway, coming over the hill was a, a white car and it was traveling at least 55 miles per hour. And I don't know if you've ever had this feeling, but I, I winced because it was right, I mean, it was on top of me. I mean, it was right there. And in my mind, I have, to this day, I have no, uh, no thought of how in the world this vehicle missed me, except but God. And in my mind, I, I think I got the words out, Jesus. I think because I was saying a prayer. I was calling on the name of Jesus. And somehow, this car missed me. It came to a stop. And, it, and, and when it came to a stop, and I mean, it was like, and I'm doing this. I came right there at his window. He was there, and I'm looking at him, and he's looking at me. And I was, I was like, I, I know I was as white as a ghost. And, and I, I, like any kid, I just pedaled off as fast as I could. And I, the guy got out of his, his car and he's yelling something at me. But I, I got out of there as quickly as I could. But when I got out of there, I knew that God had saved my life. I knew He had saved my life. And you know, today we can call on the name of Jesus. His name literally means the Lord saves and we can call on the name of Jesus. And today, you and I can have a but God moment. We can have a moment where God just gets in the way. And He intercepts what the enemy means uh, as harm. What the enemy means to, to, to bring you down, to defeat you. You can have a but God moment today. I want to, I want to share just one other passage of Scripture today with you before we close. And, and that's found in Luke chapter 6. Verse 36. And it says there, uh, actually verse 38, let's start there. It says, Give, and it will be given to you. Good measure. Press down. Shaking together and running over will be put into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use it, it will be measured back to you. You know, I've used this verse many times and and honestly, I've, I've got up and I've preached and, 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 pro and honestly, I've taken it out of context because I've, I've preached on, on tithes and offering. But this passage right here is actually, it's not even in that context. It's in the context of mercy. Because two verses earlier, it says, be merciful just as your Father is merciful. And then it says, two verses later, give Give what? Give mercy. And it will be given to you. A good measure of mercy will be pressed down. A good measure of mercy will be shaken together. A good measure of mercy will be running over, will be overflowing in your life. Can I get a witness? Yeah. A good measure of mercy will be poured into your bosom. For with the same measure that you use, it will be measured back to you. God's investment violates eternity. Can I encourage you that there are people in our community that just need love. They just need mercy. They just need to know that there's hope. Can I tell you that yesterday was a beautiful day because there were people out there that probably wouldn't, wouldn't darken the inside of a church door. But you know, I went around and I just tried to love on people. I, I hope that people out there saw a love in me and I hope that they saw the love of Jesus. Because really, people that are, that are in this world, they're just hurting. They're just hurting. And they just need to know that there's hope. And that hope is found in the Lord Jesus Christ. 
have one other verse for you. I think it's in Matthew. Do we have that? Matthew 10 and 8 or Matthew 8 and 10? It says, freely you have received, freely give. It should be in there somewhere. Because there's some context to that I want to share. You don't have it. Okay. Well, if I remember correctly, it may be Matthew 10 and 8. But Jesus said, this, is, this was during the time where he was sending out the disciples to minister and to preach. And there was a few things that he said. One of them was, he said, go out and heal the sick. And a little bit later, he said, freely you have received, freely give. So today he tells us to do that. He says, go out and heal the sick. He said, uh, one of the things he said was to cast out demons. Now I don't I don't go looking for demons. I don't I don't go chasing them. But I think that you and I should know that we have authority in Christ Jesus. Amen. We have authority. Jesus said in Luke chapter 10, verse 18 and 19, he said, I saw uh, Satan like light like lightning cast down out of heaven. I love that scripture. Like lightning out of heaven. Right? Give. And it shall be given unto you. Freely you have received. Freely give. Church, I, I don't go looking for that. But if it crosses my path, I need to know who I am in Christ Jesus. Amen? That we have authority in Christ Jesus. Freely you have received. Freely give. If it comes across your path, church, can I encourage you? In the name of Jesus, Satan, get behind me. Amen? Amen? Freely you have received, freely give. There were some other things there. I'm, I, I don't know, does anyone have to pull up Matthew 10 and 8? No. There's some other things that he said there. If you got it, read it. If not, it's okay. We may just move on. Y'all pray for the preacher today. I hope you have mercy for me today. I'm so sorry. I'll close with this thought. One thing I've learned, church, is the more I'm mercy, the more I'm Jesus. Amen. I wrote a song a few years ago. I think it's the last slide if you got it. Josh, do we have that last slide? Yes. And look, theres I don't know if you guys are familiar with this technology. There, that is a QR code. And you can actually pull out your phone right now. And you could take a picture of that. And it will take you to YouTube. And you can listen to this song all week long, The More I'm Mercy. It's actually called The More I'm Mercy, The More I'm You. But to drive the point home, I just want you to know the more I'm mercy, the more I'm Jesus. The more I'm mercy, the more I'm Jesus. We need a little more mercy in this world. Amen. We need a little more Jesus in this world. Um, I can't, you know, I wrote this song several years ago and, and my mind fails me. I forget the verses, but some of it says, uh, I want to emulate your beauty. I want to, I want to, uh, to duplicate your kindness and your, your goodness. I, I want to mirror the image of you. And then it just goes into the course. It says, the more I'm mercy, the more I'm you. The more I'm broken, the more it's true. The more I'm mercy, the more I'm you. God, help us to be mercy. God, help us to be merciful. God, help us to give. God's investment violates eternity. Man, somebody in this world needs to know that there's hope in Jesus. You and I are His em emissaries. You and I are His ambassadors. Tomorrow, when you go to work, will you be a witness? Will you be a witness for Christ? Will you tell someone about Jesus? I've been talking to our youth on Wednesday nights about being a witness. And I think sometimes we make it harder than what it really is. Being a witness is just this. It's just telling what you've seen Jesus do in your life. That's all it is. It's just... You know, and, and I encourage the kids, you know, they're talking about crazy stuff. And, and you don't have to be weird, but you can just all of a sudden just 
I don't know about that, but you know, Wednesday night, we had a really good time in youth group. What? And then tell me about that. Well, uh, we started praying for this one guy, and man, the Spirit of God came on him, and his, his countenance just totally changed. Or his, his facial expressions just totally changed. Why? Because that's the power of God. That's what it means to be a witness. I, I think sometimes we think, man, I've got to know every verse in the Bible to be a witness. No. Acts chapter 1 and, and, and verse 8 says that you shall receive power. You shall receive power from heaven and it'll come upon you and you can be a witness. You can be mercy to someone. You can tell them a story like I said today. I, I don't know, I was 10 years old and I was going down Highway 175 and I shouldn't be here today, but God got in the way. That's being a witness. Can I tell you and can I encourage you that God's investment, He's invested in you so that you and I can invest in others. You and I can invest in others. I want to invite the worship team to come back this morning. We're going to sing a song that just says, Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true. And I haven't said much about it today because uh, we're getting really close to, to our, our uh, missions given. And uh, I haven't said nothing about Speed the Light. Pastor uh, Keith, who is in Botswana right now, told me it was okay to do so. Uh, but every year we take up an offering for Speed the Light. And what Speed the Light is, is it's an, a youth initiated program for our missionaries. It's where our youth get involved. And I'm so excited to tell you that last year uh, in, in the Arizona district, uh, they have what they call two divisions. They have like the big churches. I don't know if they call them big churches or mega churches or what. And then they have a second division. We're in that second division. We're in a smaller division. But do you know that our church was number one in Speed the Light giving last year? Our youth were number one. I was, I was astounded when I saw that. When I, and, and, and we've been at youth conventions sometimes, and, uh, which is what we're fixing to go to. And they will take up an offering for Speed the Light. And it's always really... It's kind of fun for me, I'll just be real with you, because they give the youth pastors an envelope and then you put your name on it because they want to kind of give your church credit and everything. And I, I'm kidding you not, we've had seven, eight, maybe nine, ten kids at youth convention, not a lot. And we have been able, by the grace of God, to give love offerings to speed the light of, of close to $300 coming out of her kid's pocket. That's being mercy, church. That's being merciful. That's saying, God, I want you more than I want what this world has to offer. That's being merciful, and your kids are getting it. They're getting it on Wednesday nights. And so today, I hope that you and I get it. And I want to encourage you today, if, if you feel led by God, you, we can give to Speed the Light. All you have to do is go online to vescent.org. You can do it there. Hit the gift tab. And you can give to Speed the Light. Or you can grab one of the envelopes at the back. And please forgive me. I, I'm just now thinking of this. That's why we have a really good pastor. I totally forgot to take an offering this morning. I'm just now realizing that. I'm so sorry. But would you, would you today, would you remember you can give online digitally? in an offering or you can put in one of those black uh, boxes at the back you can give an offering think about giving an offering to speed the light as well um, I know that we're talking a lot about giving today but please hear my heart if it wasn't for Jesus would none of us be here today can we close with this song today Lord prepare me and uh, would you sing it with us today Amen.